So, and mentioning you know a weaker body part that's been brought up tremendously. That was one of the things that was spoken of me. I remember doing my first, uh, well, my my rookie for your, rookie show, and people were like, oh my god, this guy can't lift flex, has no back, has yeah. no arms. So I was like, okay, motherfuckers, and you have done that. I mean, in fact, probably one of the most impressive one year transformations. I would say out of a collection of five people I have in my head, you are one of them. That dramatic difference you've done in one you in that one year. What did you do in that one year? I mean, we were talking earlier. <laughs> one of the good things that came out of COVID was you had nothing else to do. It was the year of COVID. So I literally had six months of just like working in a basement for a while, had to get creative, didn't have a lot of weight, which forced me to like properly contract, build the mind muscle connection. And I was also purposefully doing that, trying to build that. I actually started posing my back, which I never did before. Built more mind-muscle connection. And I think for a lot of years, I had a lot of injuries and, like, pains and aches and was doing more shows. And that was my first year where, like, I had a full off-season, no travel because of COVID, and I was just, like, stuck training with nothing else to do. And I just slept and ate like a bodybuilder, (laughs) as I should. But, you know, life is busy. There's more to life still sometimes, you know? Well, the difference is... Sorry, sorry, Chris, come Yeah, no, you... As you know, there's more to it than just sleeping and doing that. You could, but you're going to miss a lot of life at that point, a lot of opportunity that I'm not willing to give up on right now. And so balancing it is hard, but that year really pushed me into, like, my one of my best looks I ever had. And then that, like, that was, like, the look. And I was like, okay, this is it. Now it's fine-tuning where I'm at right now. Yeah. So it was just a good year, a good off-season, and it all paid off. So you went back to basics? Is that what you're saying? Barbells, dumbbells, stuff like that? Yeah. Well, so I was also, like, Probably the year before that, I would bend over a row, like, four plates. 405, I just, like, nothing. I would just yeah. rip it. But I didn't realize I had so much, like, athletic, like, hip movement that were so subtle, but it was pulling off from my hips and lower back, mm-hmm. and I barely even felt it in my back. So even now, I, if I bent over a row, I'll do, like, two plates and a 25 max. So I'm gone. Over years, I've been getting lighter and lighter, but mm-hmm. it's harder and harder, and I'm actually contracting my back now instead of just yanking shit up, like, you know, the old ego shit. It felt good to put four plates on and yeah. row it. Don't and, get it wrong. But I love those. Co- <laughs> my favorite comment was like, I thought he was going to deadlift it. And he started rowing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> but I've had to leave that little ego aside and do it properly now. So paid off, though. I, I hear you about the ego. We trained today, guys. And um, it was nothing better for me. And we spoke about this when we were training, walking into the gym, especially when you've got guys who are, you know, are trying to beat you at your own craft. And you know, it's like, you can try, but I'm yeah. still going to get them reps out. Yeah. Um, and then today, me and you trained for the first time in a number of number of years. And uh, you picked it up and you're like, oh my God, this is heavy. I was like, yes. Okay. <laughs> Even though I'm retired, I feel good. I got him. I got him. And then he was like, okay, let's put some more weight on. I was like, oh, here we go. Me. But anyway, you've got to see the YouTube to see, yeah. see what happened. Did Chris kick my ass or did Chris, or did I kick Chris, Chris's ass? We were gentle with each other. We were gentle. I'll come back in my full off season yeah. and then I'll try and put you to shame. Yeah, he did grab my cheeks a few times. That was a cute set. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. No, we, we do love training together and I do spe- love spending time with you because one of the reasons and mu- multiple reasons why I've been, you know, very vocal over the years, um, as well as, you know, on the phone, text messages um, about my my love for you and how proud I am is because you have a lot of responsibility, whether you went out to seek this um, or it just fell in your lap or whether you've seen it and you nurtured it and you are where you are today. I think the last time I checked, you're at 70 million followers, which is unbelievable. It's crazy. 17 million people I have click. no idea why. On that follow button. Yeah. Um, I think my mum hit that follow button a few times, but, you know, she blends into that 17 of yours. But nonetheless, 17 million, my friend. And um, that, as I said, comes with a lot of responsibility and uh, a a lot of, um, well, just again, you are are the badge of honour for everything you do, not just for your sponsors, but also the sport. Um, and I've said this, that you are the face of the sport. You know, at, at one point in time, I was flying the flag for, for the division, flying this flag around the world. Both of us were. And then you had this incredible breakthrough. Like, we were all at one point in time, even playing fields with, spon- with, with uh, social media, like mm-hmm. a few million off or whatever. I know that's a lot for some people watching, but, <laughs> you know, where we're at is kind of like a few million off, and then all of a sudden, boof. What was it that you think that catapulted you to that next level 
I really don't know like the secret to it. I think it's like a perfect storm of a lot of stuff that I'm very blessed and grateful that it came into my life because mm-hmm. I have no secret formula to it at all. You know, I think I just focused on staying true to who I was always. And I, I think I'm a different than the typical bodybuilder. I'm not as like crazy, intense, like killer, like, you know, like trying to kill everyone, beat everyone. I'm just like a little more laid back, a little more relaxed. And I'm just like, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to showcase it. Yeah. And I don't think at my point when I came into the league, many people were doing like the whole influencer YouTube side of it and competing at a high level. All yeah. bodybuilders were like, I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not going to YouTube. And like, yeah. I don't have time for that. I, I, I'm going to ruin my workout if I'm filming. I'm going to whatever. And then they just focused on bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. And I came in and I was like, well, why can't you do both? And I was younger, of course. Yeah. So coming in with a generation where social media is a lot more popular, I was still a little bit later than like the really popular side of it. But I decided like I wanted to document as much as I could. And as I slowly did, people kind of, took stuff from what they did from it the feedback i got from like being myself and not being like a crazy like unrelatable like mindset that no one can touch i'm like i have fears and anxious anxieties insecurities like stuff that like i worry about i shared it i talked about it the ups and the downs and people were like damn he's real i'm like yeah <laughs> we're all real <laughs> believe yeah. it or not i just tried to show it, and i think people really connected with that and i'm super grateful for it and it's also allowed me to continue doing so without burning out because i'm being myself a lot mm. of people who are putting on an act or a show, eventually they're like, that's, that catches up to you and you feels like this like fake like aura around you and this like pressure of like having to perform. I don't have to perform. Mm. The camera goes on me and if I don't want to be on camera, I don't, I'm not on camera. Mm. If I do, I'm just doing whatever I would be doing not on camera. Yeah. So it's really not that difficult for me to do. Yeah, and again, you've done a great job of staying true to that. Mm. You know, a lot of people, no names mentioned, we know of you. Um, I've come up through the ranks. They've had a little notoriety, and all of a sudden, they start changing their ways. Yeah, they start changing how they are to the fans. Start changing how they are to their social media persona. They kind of start putting on this uh, "I'm too cool for school" kind of thing. And you've you've doubled down. You've doubled down on a lot of your um, on your attributes that got you to where you are. Um, to your point and everything that you just said you have such a great way of connecting with the fans because you are real. You know, you are the same. And I say this to so many people. This is not me blowing smoke. I've said it on the podcast too. I'm not tired us about Chris. I've talked many times about Chris. Uh, the one, You've seen these ones, right? Of course. I thought so, yeah. Uh, My biggest hype man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've said many times that, you know, you are the true poster boy. If anybody is coming through the sport right now, bodybuilder, female, male, in between, <laughs> look at Chris. Because there's a way of doing this right, and there's a way of doing it wrong. I can mm. show you an example of 15, 20 people who are doing it wrong. Yeah, There's not many people are doing it right. But the thing is also not to do it like me. Don't do, do, don't do what Chris did. Do what you do. You know? yeah. Like that's the, the moral of the story there. It's not to copy what Chris is doing because that's just Chris. Yeah. If you're different than me, be different. Do your thing. But stick to that. Thank you for watching this segment. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. Help us by subscribing. Leave a like, comment, or a positive review. Click this to see what YouTube recommends. And this to see the full interview. See you on the next one. Out.